Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Georgi Chakrov and together we go through structuring option sets. So I'm here uh, again with Georgi. Hi Georgi. Hi Nick. Hi. And uh, today we're going to look at the structuring option sets assignment walkthrough. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, first off, I guess we want to look at uh, what the difference between options and categories are, which we just looked at in the previous assignment, yeah? Yes. Well, that will be an interesting question. The, would you mind <laughs> uh, giving the uh, answer? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Because <laughs> um, we were just looking at categories, which is how you disaggregate information for a specific data element. So we were just looking at, I think the example was, uh, facilities. You could say which facilities were constructed and you can say seven bathrooms and ten classrooms and five latrines and it's all one data element that we disaggregate by. Options are a little bit different. Uh, options you can't disaggregate by options so um, but it's more of an option that you would answer in a in your form. So it might be a yes or no or it might be a multiple choice but it's more like a radio button. You only have one option of, of choosing it. So an example that we could look at using the same facilities would be uh, instead of which of these facilities have been constructed and say how many, you would say have any facilities been created and the option would be yes or no. Uh, another one would be which facility was created this month or this week and then you would have a list of you could click uh, kitchen or you could click classroom or you could click latrine but you can only choose one or the other. You wouldn't be able to choose all of them and, and say how many of each. Uh, but let's go down and look at these um, examples because we can look at, at how they look. Okay, so in, in a sense with categories you actually enter information and with options you get to choose information. Right? That's a really good point. Yeah, that's a really great way to, uh, to describe it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's look at these first two uh, tables here because these first two tables are structuring data elements for your options. The last one we had, how do you structure your data elements by by disaggregation or by category? And this one is how do you structure your data elements by options? So this is, uh, we have two data elements. One is attendance and one is role. And these we are actually using in tracker, um, event tracker. And it's important to note that also uh, you can use option sets in tracker or in um, aggregate or, or um, routine data entry. So they're, they're very flexible. And so for the data element of attendance, we want to be able to answer on time, late, or absent. That's what we want the person to be able to answer. And for role, we want the person to be able to answer student or teacher. So once we've, def and then we would create a new ro uh, row for each uh, new data element that had different options. Um, is that, is that kind of clear enough? Yeah, that, that sounds clear. And I would like to ask a question, uh, mm -hmm. where, in which application in, in DHS do you actually create options? Yeah, it's kind of hidden, right? It's, I believe it's yeah. in data administration. Uh, so it's in a weird, it's in a weird um, app. But when you go into that, then you're able to, I think it's, data, it's option sets management or option sets that you can yes. click in. Yes, as, as opposed to categories where you actually have to go to the data element and indicator section mm -hmm. uh, for options, you go to data administration. Yeah, cool. And, and now let's, let's go down to the second set here, the second uh, um, couple of tables. And in here we have, now that we know what our options sets are, now we can kind of organize those because we can choose to, to organize them in a certain way that we minimize how much work we do. Uh, and here we have the example attendance. Uh, we can create the option set with the same name as the data element. Um, so it just happens that they have the same name. But the uh, role uh, might be kind of not clear enough. So you would create the option set with the name student slash teacher role. And then you know what your options are within that uh, option set. And then you can assign those to your data element. So is that, uh, how does that sound, Georgie, as a kind of run through of, of how to build these tables to structure your uh, data elements when you're thinking about what option sets we want to have available, what do we need, uh, and that sort of thing. Oh, this, this sounds really good. Um, I just wanted to add for the last uh, option set creation is uh, uh, 
the same as creating a category, right? You have category options, and then you would like to assign them to one category, uh, giving it a clear enough and intuitive name so that when you select on a later stage, you know exactly what this option set or, or a category actually contains. Yeah, good point, yeah. Yeah, if we have multiple uh, option sets for role, but one might be student, teacher, another might be policeman, fireman, it would be confusing. Yes. So we have to clarify that in the name of the option set. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Okay, well, I think that's good for now. Thanks, Georgie. And Thank you. Uh, I think we'll wrap that up there. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical Outcomes.